Sometimes, baby, don't you find that the best of things in life are flowers? Well, how come they leave? And I just hope that you find all the things you want. skateboard for a lot of years. I didn't do the math right now. Math, I'm an artist. Um, but that's a lot of years. Uh, and, and so I started off with that kind of music, but I, I started off doing that and I started going to shows and I got a, a wider appreciation of different kinds of music by trying to go to different, different and bigger concerts all the way through my youth. 
and um, I ended up in bluegrass, which is probably what makes me feel the most comfortable. So it's just, right nowadays it's bluegrass. And bluegrass music is my favorite. Uh, what started you to start designing your artwork like this? Um, my mom was an artist, and my grandmother was an artist as well. She, uh, my grandmother liked she was Bob Ross pink style. So she painted um, trees and mountains and barns. She painted the house she grew up in, things like that. And she did some portraits. And I wasn't a big kid growing up. Didn't play football. Didn't play. Didn't play baseball. Wasn't a team sport guy. So all my friends would run off, and I sit home and draw. And of course, we're from Illinois, so you know half the year is. Uh, freezing cold outside, so you just stay inside and hide anyway. So I drew a lot. My parents always gave me paper, always gave me um, some, some mediums to work with. They always supported my art. And so I just kept doing it. That's what I still still enjoy now. So I continue to do it. Yeah, and um, I know you make a few coloring books. How many of those do you I've self-published four coloring books so far. And they're just a, they're a collage and a collection of all my work I've done for my publishers put into a book so people can enjoy them. Different way. On the side of just doing festivals, what do you do when you're not at festivals? Besides just making art, like, do you sell art on the side? Well, I'll, I'll do, um, I, I, people buy, you know, people uh, commission portraits all the time on the internet. They'll paint portraits on the internet, from the internet. People like, have me send me images or ideas and I'll paint a picture for them. Um, I do logo design, I do, um, but otherwise for fun, I, you know, I play video games, things like any regular kid, listen to music, I enjoy my friends, time with my friends, of course. Um, I, I love to be outside, I love, I love this kind of environment, so I tend to be here as much as possible can. You know. How long do you think you've been making it? Officially, I've been selling my artwork for about eight years. But I have been drawing, I remember in like fourth grade, copying pictures of Garfield Pat and logos from video games I like, and so as long as I've been able to be drawing or have paper in front of me, I've been drawing. Now, you say that art is the only thing that you would want to do, like, do, yeah. do you enjoy... Well, uh, I worked a lot of different jobs. You know, coming up since I, was, since I was 15, I worked everything from pizza delivery to ice skating to concession stand to construction to... I worked at a bead store, I worked at a pottery shop, I worked at a screen printing place, I worked at... A lot, I worked a lot of jobs for a lot of other people, and I've always enjoyed that. I was always, I've always been a hard worker. But when I finally got the opportunity, when I was about 40 years old, 40, about 41, 42 years old, I got the opportunity to take off and just do art further. And so for the last three and a half years, it's just been the art that people ask me for, the art that I want to do. And luckily, I've been, I'm not starving, I have enough people that support me, that want the art, that, that I, I can, it's my job. You know, so I don't have to clock in the job anymore. I did that for 30 years, and now I, now I, I get to work for myself. You know, so I really do enjoy it. Have you ever had, okay, and this is a random question, kind of on topic, have you ever just had someone come up to you and say, hey, I want this to be a tattoo? Oh, sure. Sure. Oh, yeah. I, I, well, I even had a drawing. You see how you're the drawing with the pocket knife and the blades? Yes. Your dad probably has one. Um, uh, my buddy's a mandolin player, and he showed up at practice one night, and he's playing his mandolin, and right here on his arm is my drawing. <laughs> So they have taken my, I don't do tattooing, but they, they have taken my art and put make it into tattoos. And I, I let the, anybody who really wants to do that or has an interest or want in for that, I ought to support them. You know, as long as they have a good tattoo artist, you know, it's going to come out nice. Um, but, no? Do you have anything to say about the Progress Memorial Festival? Anything about it? It's amazing. It's an opportunity that I was just blessed with I, I, by accident, thanks to uh, Dan Gilman and Jeff Jermankin and John Hotsey, the, the now runner of the festival. Um, they asked me to be part of it, and I was just lucky enough to have got them excited about my drawing, and I've been here for all eight years, and it's about the best thing I do all year long. It's the only time I'll ever say on a Saturday morning that I wish it was Wednesday morning. Right? As I sat there in bed this morning, and all I could think about is I wish it was Wednesday. Now, not Saturday. would you like to plug in or your yeah, well, uh, it's just John, just John Griffin Art with no H, J-O-N Griffin Art. If you ever forget, it's written on all the paintings. Um, John Griffin Art on Facebook and Instagram, and I, my email is jiveafro at Yahoo. That's a long story, I'll tell it another time. Okay, it was an old band I was in, a bunch of friends when we were in high school. But anyway, um, no, I'm just lucky to get to do what I do. My, the, bottom, the bottom line is, be part of the festival scene, be part of this, this event. Um, even when baby's crying and the wind blowing, the rain falling down, 
I've made more friends at this festival than I think I've made my whole the rest of my life with you. You know, your your dad, just speaking out of context, your dad and his crew have been some of the greatest people. And there, I think I made 12 new friends when I met those guys. Me and Chad started talking, next thing you know, I got 12 new friends. And then we all come out here and all of our friends come out here. And the, the best thing about the John Harper Festival is the people. I mean, the music's amazing, the, the hands down, the picking is a wonderful, the after parties is amazing. Um, but the people that you meet that come to this festival, that try really hard to be here, are very dedicated folks. And and that really shines on me because when a lot of times when you're at the Walmart or at the grocery store, you don't see all those people at once, ever. Okay, we come to the festival and we all come to the same place. Mama said, they, they were good last night. Mama said string band. Um, but, so that, I get a lot out of that. There's, there's a lot of value to that. And if you, any, anytime in life when you're feeling like there's no hope or the people really have lost it or they don't know or there's so many people that just don't get it. You can come to a situation like this where there's a couple thousand people who all have the same ideas. And that's originally when I first started going to big concerts, I didn't know there were that many people who liked the kind of music I liked. Or I didn't know there were that many people that liked the things I liked. And all of a sudden I started to see there's a real community for the things that I really enjoy. And so I center myself in these places and I spend most of my summer doing this kind of stuff. I'll go next week to Hannibal, Missouri. And then after that I have a big party at my house. And after that we're going to Syracuse, New York. And then we'll travel. We might go we're going to Kentucky in October. And we're just going to travel around and do as many art shows as we can. Um, sometimes I'll even paint live in front of people. If it's not too hot, I'll do it. It's kind of hard to do when it's super hot because the paint doesn't react very well. But the idea is um, I hope to be able to perpetuate this and go on for a long time doing this. Meet more, meet more friends and do more things. And I appreciate you today. Do you have any tips for anyone on how to start trying to become an artist? How to, I mean, I don't know. Don't throw anything away. And if every time when you when you start a drawing and you um, when you start a drawing and um, you don't like it, keep drawing, keep drawing, don't throw it away. The worst thing I ever did growing up was draw stuff I didn't like and throw it away. It's gone. And then as I got older, I found that every drawing I do, every project, every painting I do, starts off with a period of frustration and unhappiness. Um, so. You, no matter how frustrating your projects are, you have to stick with them. And you'll find that each project will, pro will propose a challenge, but then in the end will be more rewarding than the challenge. That's my way of life. Yeah. I will, uh, I'll see you at your party at your house. Yeah. 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 I like, that's what I like to hear, Spencer. All right, yeah, that is good news. That's yeah. really good news. I know Tony said he was coming, so yeah. he wanted to, so. Okay, good, good. We're gonna have a really good time. All right, well, thank you for this interview. You're welcome, right. you're welcome. Send me a link. I will. <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, you guys are awesome, man. I hope y'all are having fun. Thank God the rain stayed away. Man, I'm having a good time right now. I hope y'all are. Cheers, y'all. All right. So I grew up in East Tennessee. I grew up in Chattanooga. And uh, in the Smoky Mountains out there around this time of year, there's a phenomenon that happens. It's called the synchronized fireflies. And what it is is firefly mating season. All the fireflies go out in the, in the Smoky Mountains there, and they all blink at the same time, and they do it in the sky. It's pretty cool, it's cool enough all the Yankees come down and look at them. It's weird, they say it's good for tourism, I don't know. But I thought about writing a song about it, so let's do it. Tennessee Moon. How we have our fun. How we 
is what it was called and uh, we was loving loving we were loving next to this fellow <laughs> named Luke Sky Stroller he used to make himself a big old tire fire 
cook him up some barbecue womp rat. We drink some beers and eat some of that green milk surprise. You talking about blue Luke? milk, green milk surprise. Luke, ain't tell us all these stories. Well, we wrote them down and put them in a song for you. This like, one's wait, wait. called. Do you tell him about his dirty bathrobe? Yeah, well, no. He had a dirty bath bathrobe and some white ninja boots. And a big dog. Named Chucky. No, no, no. Charles. Charlie. Charlie. Was he in charge? Yeah. No, he no, was no. In that's Charlie. our other member. No. Oh, yeah, what that was. One? Chewy. That that's was it. it. Yep. Like the granola bar. Yeah. So, anyway, we put these stories into a song we'd like to play for you right now, and this song is called Tatooine. Well, so this song here, this features um, one of Alan Selvage's many home-built instruments. This one here is my personal favorite. Yeah, I take offense to that. Part of it was built in the garage. Okay, garage built. Uh, so if you notice, heart in the basement. Yeah, we find things and make instruments out of them. So heart in the yard. Yeah. If you want to know how to build stuff, see us after the show, and we'll give you some tips on how to make some homemade instruments. And then see us at the boogie stage and we'll tell you more about them. 4.30, I think. I think I got it. I think I got it. You good? I think. Talk about this guy named Vader. 